This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Hey, all, it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Will. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Wow! How do I go? Welcome to season 16, episode number 3,400. And 42. Along with Steve the Throw Hill, the Ted Smith, Ooh. and Mike Hawk. Montgomery! Thank you. Are in the men's room. I'll tap today the return of Who Sucks Less. Less. We Less. will play Profile This. Plus headlines, men's room shout out of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. The clock. Drinking and drive. All right, here we go. Florida mom is arrested after going to her daughter's school in boxing gloves to beat up another kid. <laughs> Meanwhile, a woman is left horrified after posting a pic of a wine glass with a reflection showing her happy squid. <laughs> Ohio State football player can drive through a tackle, but not a McDonald's drive through When you find yourself stuck on top of a T-Rex at a dinosaur park, what do you do? And a man in Ohio State University RV tries to show Florida police who is in fact the dumbest state. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, sometimes when you need to sleep, you're just going to fall asleep. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Your body just checks the hell out. Like, you ever fall asleep at work? Well, last week, a large barge hit three homes in Gig Harbor. What happened? Well, the tugboat captain fell asleep at the helm. I say otherwise, he's one of the best captains. You know, when he's awake, does a bang-up job. Earlier this year, a video went viral of not one, but two cashiers asleep at the registers at the same time at a convenience store. Now, lucky for them... Customers chose to wake them up instead of rob them blind. But waking them up was not easy. And there's a story from a few months back about the woman in Missouri who went to the mattress store and uh, fell asleep on one of the display mass- uh, mattresses. And I'm sure that's not too unusual. But this particular woman, well, she ended up sleeping in the store overnight. In fact, an employee woke her up the next morning when they arrived for work. Hell, in last year's Golden Globes, Al Pacino, he's up for Best Actor in a TV Drama. And when he appeared on screen with his fellow nominees, the only difference with him, Al was straight up asleep, man. He's just (laughs) snoozing. (laughs) But like we said, sometimes when you need to sleep, you're just going to fall asleep. A woman in Tennessee, she did something I've never been able to do. She fell asleep standing up in the deli aisle of a grocery store. And in Minnesota, a man fell asleep at the gas pump. And then in Ohio, we have the story of a raccoon that fell asleep in somebody's dishwasher. And there's a walrus that fell asleep. And when I woke up, it was in Ireland. 
We have a lot of sleeping stories to share with you. And in return, we ask you to share your sleeping story with us with the answer to this question. Who fell asleep and where? Be part of the big show called 206 421 Rock. Like the men's room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID 19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Geico asks, How would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit UMGC.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Oh, Jules, and away we go. Welcome to Season 16, Episode number 3,442. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed future repeat. That is a fact. The exciting return of Who Sucks Less. Steve, you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. All of them suck to some degree. It's up to us to figure out out of the three which one sucks the least. How are we looking this week? Yeah, all three of these suck. Uh, I'm a terrible person, so I find them all very funny. Not very funny, but I giggled. Maybe I shouldn't have giggled, but I, I think you will too. Okay. You'll say, man, these people are horrible. Why am I smiling? Is it because of their stupidity or what they did? Uh, what they did. All right. Just decisions they made. You know what? I'm on your team today. All right. I think you'll agree. I'm already feeling like laughing at it. There's one in particular. Mike was going through the stories earlier, and we both agreed about just a particular assault that happened. But uh, we both kept chuckling. Like, it's not funny, but God damn, that's funny. Is this is the story that involves the sock. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good times. Okay. <laughs> Who sucks less is uh, is on the way in our question today. We're going to uh, talk about falling asleep. We had a, a bizarre story here in Seattle last week. And it happened in uh, Gig Harbor where there was a runaway barge. And the first report comes out in the morning of mm-hmm. uh, these folks' homes. They were getting up in the morning, I believe. And basically a barge was barreling uh, right at their homes, which were waterfront. Sure. And in this case, uh, a lot of the docks were on the water. So where the barrier was, where the, the, the water wall was, their houses basically were right up adjacent. Sitting right there, yeah. Yeah. And the barge was coming straight at them. And it was a barge that was being pushed by a tugboat. Now, it turns out. The, the captain of the tugboat, uh, the island chief, he fell asleep at the helm. Now, the tug did not run aground, but the barge named Island Chase did, and it scraped up a waterfront home, and then it hit a couple others and mm-hmm. went down the thing and everything. It was headed southbound at the time. The general manager of the tug and barge company said his four-person crew was able to scramble into action. They pulled the barge off the beach to prevent more damage. A company is working with the homeowners. We're going to get this taken care of as soon as possible. Well, the but, company responded great, man. And yeah. they even said, like, this, this captain is one of our top captains, but again, he does his best work awake. Hey, I fell asleep. Yeah. I mean, and look, like anything else, it it, uh, it happens. It's never happened to me at work. But falling asleep? Never falling asleep at work. Uh, I think I have. I have slept at work. I've slept on a couch. Right. I've slept get up at and work. That was going to be my question. Is there a difference? Yes. Yeah. I mean, right. you voluntarily go to sleep at work because early in radio, you cover a lot of shifts and all the shifts are crap, right? Sure. The weekend's overnight. So it's like, it's just easier to spend the night. Mm-hmm. But oh I have fallen asleep during a meeting. Uh, not that long ago, but I was only asleep for about 45 seconds to call myself. I think before anyone noticed. Well, my thing was, was that, uh, I did from about 1996 or so to, I don't know, maybe 2002, I did a morning show. Mm-hmm. So when you're doing a morning show, uh, depending on where you work, there's, uh, there's always someone there who's on the overnight. Right. And so I have come in. You know, three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. You know, and had to wake up the guy to tell him, like, "Look, man, uh, you're off the air." You know, because <laughs> he's just sitting there at the board and he's asleep. It's not our radio station; it's another radio station in the building. Typically, one person would take care of everything. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that that person was that person was asleep all the time. And then there was, you know, 
coming into porn on my computer. I mean, it was right. You never knew what you were going to get when you came in in the morning. Then we have the story of a raccoon in Ohio. Police in Ohio posted an image of a raccoon that broke into the home of a resident and fell asleep in a dishwasher. <laughs> in the dishwasher. <laughs> After spotting the crafty animal, resident contacted the police and said, Hey, I got a raccoon in my dishwasher. They then dispatched patrolman Johnny Metzo, who they describe as their absurd animal call officer. Okay, so they do have the guys like, I got it. I know how to deal with this. They do, but this has got to be in a bigger town, right? I don't know. I mean, you just wouldn't think that, I guess, all towns have a crazy animal person? You might. But again, if I found a raccoon in my dishwasher after screaming for a second, like, I would call animal control, not the cops. But I guess these cops, they get enough of these calls. Where was it at? Someplace in Ohio. And, there were, and the cop was an animal person? Ridgeville Police Department. I don't know that he's an animal person. It sounds more like among the police officers, he's the guy, guy right. most likely to say, I've got it. I don't in other mind words, with somebody... It. Locks- I don't think he's an expert. He just ain't worried about somebody it. Somebody locks her keys in their car. You know the cop to call. It's going to be able to pick that lock pretty quick. I would call Ryan Castle. Right? I mean, I just- mean you, you always know who the guy is who's... who's, who's Talented at whatever skill right. that is. So, yeah. Exactly. So, if it's an animal, you get right. this guy. If it's a car, right. I had a buddy who could get into anywhere with a credit card. Really? That guy? Yeah, pretty um, much. He could just kind of wriggle it in there and he'd start doing his thing and all of a sudden it'd go pop and you go, dude, how did you do that? And it made it look so easy. It's always good to know someone who could do that. Yeah. But uh, either way, uh, Johnny Metzo, the absurd animal call officer, he re- successfully removed the raccoon from the dishwasher and he escorted the uh, animal out of the home. And then we just get this one in today. Body camera video released by Columbus, Ohio police show uh, a DUI arrest of an Ohio State football player. He's a safety name, Marcus Hooker. The arrest happened back in March at a McDonald's. So officers approached his car. It was stopped in the drive-thru. He is unconscious behind the wheel. He's out. Officers noted that the car was still in drive. He did have his foot on the brake. They repeatedly tapped on the windows and the windshield, trying to wake him up. Then they start shaking the car. Right. Rocking it back and forth. That does not work. When that failed, they turned on the siren of the police cruiser. Aha! Now this is a great idea. They said, we hit him with the whoops. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Uh-huh. Uh, before the siren went off, the noise temporarily woke up Hooker. He was startled when he heard the siren. Then he went back to sleep. <laughs> so they then <laughs> resorted, <laughs> resorted to breaking the passenger side rear window. I've never seen a guy this out, according to one of the officers. He was removed from the car, put into cuffs. They verified his name and all that stuff, and he was arrested after a field test. Uh, either way, he was dead asleep in the drive-thru at McDonald's. Our question, who fell asleep and where? 206-421-ROCK. Uh, somebody, uh, I have not linked it up yet. But someone says, did you see the video of the lady at Subway falling asleep in a sandwich that she was making? No. So this wow. is the person working there. Apparently, is like tipping over and falling. I will pull that up in a bit. Hello, Jessica. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Vitales. Hola. Um, my dad. He was famous for falling asleep everywhere, and I'm saying everywhere. He could stand. He could fall asleep standing. Anything. Well, it was a hot summer day, and my dad was out golfing. And apparently got too hot and decided he was going to lay down in the middle of the grass and take a nap. Um, well, this guy, came, these guys came across and thought he was dead. And they were like, sir, sir. And they couldn't wake him, couldn't wake him. And then finally my dad decided to scratch himself. And that's when they realized he was awake. You thought it was I a mean, corpse with itchy that, testicles? I mean, <laughs> that, that is a little bit strange. You, you would definitely think someone had had a medical emergency. Maybe they walked over to get a ball from a wrong fairway and got hit in the head. I yeah, because people don't sleep in golf course. No, not yeah. normally. No, no, not normally. Not at all. But, um, yeah, my dad could fall asleep anywhere, just snap up his fingers and he'd be out. That was his major talent. What uh, Do you remember him personally being asleep like... You have a recital or something's going on at the school or your graduation oh. or whatever, and looking over and he's out? Constantly. Constantly. <laughs> my dad was just, an, he was a day sleeper. Um, my friend comes over and my mom, my mom goes, comes in and she goes, where's your dad? And she goes, is he upstairs asleep or is he in the office asleep? So did he, was always, I mean, could he make it through a football game, a movie? Like, was there ever a time where if he sat down, was he just going to doze off? He could he could stay awake during the Seahawks games, but yeah, anything else, he 
he pretty much can just doze off too. Did now was he? Did he just bust his ass all the time and he was just constantly tired, or was he like uh, narcoleptic? Um, he busts his ass. He was a computer programmer, um, and was a awesome guy. He fought in the Vietnam vet, um, or Vietnam war. So he was a vet. Um, and Dad just kind of said, after you've been in war, you can sleep anywhere. You know what? That's a fair right, statement. Yeah. I bet, that I bet is, that's true. That is a fair statement. Yeah. I can't. Well, I know you can. It's one thing to say, man, I can sleep anywhere. Being homeless, I can sleep anywhere. But that does not mean that I will just fall asleep anytime I'd like. No. You know what I mean? I can sleep somewhere uncomfortable. I get it. I can survive it. It's not a big deal. But I don't, other than a bar where I'm drinking way too much, uh, I don't, I yeah. can't just like sit down like, I'm going to sleep now and I'm out. I can't. I think now. it's different for vets, though, because they're just in a place, especially in combat, that it's just. Yeah, I guess loud you and every you round. Only, you only get to pick the hour. Somebody's like, you got four hours. Yeah. At best. I wish I could shut it down. I wish I was a napper. I wish I could do it. Really? I know a lot of people who can fall asleep for 20 minutes, pop back up, and enjoy the rest of their day, fall asleep at the regular time later on. I don't know. I like, just, I've never liked the idea of naps, man. I don't, I don't like wasting my day. Like, once I'm well, up, I just want to be up until I'm going to go to bed. 20 minutes, I, if I could do it and just sit there for a minute, just close my eyes and just get a little bit of rest, I'd do it. But I just can't. I mean, when I'm down, I'm out. Like yeah, I'm, just, I'm, it would take me twenty minutes just to fall asleep, right? To to you know just get through the process. At least, sure. Of like, all right, I can calm down and go to sleep. Last time I did that was last weekend. I met Castle four thirty five o'clock in the afternoon, right? And I thought, you know, man, maybe today's the day I can take a nap. So I go and take a shower. Go to meet my buddy for uh, dinner later on. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just lay down here. I'm going to fall asleep. I don't know, twenty thirty minutes. Fell asleep at six o'clock, right? All right? I woke up at four a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what day is it? Where am I? What happened there? I hadn't eaten dinner. hadn't eaten anything. You know what I mean? I'm just, now I'm starving. It's 4 a.m. I'm completely awake. I got plenty of sleep. You know what I mean? Well, like, look, it's a 10-hour well, 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 nap. There's nothing on TV. Yeah, that's sleep. That's not a nap. I mean, look, I love a weekend nap. But also, don't, do you usually shower before bed? No. Oh. I mean, that sounds like a routine. Like on Sundays, right? Like, like I get up a lot of times on Sunday mornings to watch sports in Europe. Sure. So I have some ciders or whatever, and then usually around one or two, I just shut it down for an hour, ninety minutes, get back up, make dinner. Do you set an alarm? No. Wow. See, that's, 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 that's a slippery slope. That's where I messed up. I should have just said, "Look, one hour, half an hour." I mean, I don't even remember. Why did you think you could just will yourself to sleep? For I 20 don't minutes? know. After I was drinking like, I was tired. with Castle. Well, then we only had a couple beers. Like, I met him in the afternoon. But, I mean, you know how we put along pretty fast. That's what I'm saying. A couple still. beers, a couple shots. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's typical standard fare. You know what I mean? We're not going to go to the bar and not have a shot. Right. But I'm just saying, like, and we don't have, for what, like an hour last Thursday? We put down a lot of beer and a lot of shots. And one hour, we're only gone for like 60 minutes. But it was it was a night's worth of drinking. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. So, so if I'm going to go down and nap, basically, uh-huh. I have to say good night. Efficiency. Is key. I will say though, I, I love the weekend nap. Even if you're not doing anything, sometimes you just have time on the afternoon in, in the afternoon, like, yeah. What the hell? Lay down for a little bit. Yeah. Or try your couch too. So it's not as comfortable. Right, like for me, generally if I take a nap in the afternoon, a lot of times I'll nap in the clothes I'm wearing. Sure. But like, you're right. If I if I took a shower and then put on like mesh shorts mm-hmm. you're out, you're and gone. I was like doing my nighttime routine, then that, that that's maybe the key is to keep your shoes on and try to sit up and do it. Yeah. That way you're never really in the comfort zone of sleep. Who fell asleep and where? 206-421-ROCK. Uh, somebody here says you only need 28 minutes to rejuvenate the mind. 28 minutes Yeah, believe it. I have a buddy who naps every day for 20 minutes. Swears Oprah does it. What has she done? She doesn't accomplish anything. Mm-hmm. Being yeah. all lazy and sleeping. You should tell her, hey, Oprah, you're eight minutes short. Well, sometimes, too, it's not even about like physically sleeping. Like Just close your eyes, turn off the TV, put your phone down, just lay there for half an hour. Uh, right. That I have no problem with. I could lay there and do nothing, but I don't want to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. I know it's stupid. <laughs> then I lay there and I'm like, like, I wonder what I'm missing right now. Yeah. Been God, it's so funny. There's definitely two types of people. I have a bunch of friends that are like, can't nap, can't nap. I don't want to nap. I but can't do I it. I just don't want to do anything. Right. I mean, it is dumb. I could lay in bed for an hour and just be like, I'm fine. Listening to nothing, watching nothing. Like, Why don't you take a nap? That's a stupid idea. Well, you know, like when you have a beer on vacation, especially if it's around two o'clock, right? Because mm-hmm. for all of us, two o'clock, you got to be on the air. So it feels kind of awesome. I, yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. I was going to say, almost dirty. Like, you're getting away with something. I'm on vacation. It's so like, when I take a nap on the weekend, especially like a Sunday, I'm like, oh, this time tomorrow, I'll be working. <laughs> nap time. <laughs> 
Jesus. <laughs> Who fell asleep and where? 206 421 Rock. Hello, Tom. Welcome to the bedroom. Hello, how you doing? Hola. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I fell asleep on I 5 southbound doing 60 miles an hour. That's and not good. Ended, uh, no, not good at all. We ran into a, a truck and told my truck and his. Were you injured at all? No, actually, uh, uh, I say uh, airbags definitely saved me. <laughs> I do. Airbags that's... in the crumple zone, you know, in these new cars, they crumple to help protect you and stuff. It, it, it saved me because I just had a little bruise from my seatbelt. Were, were you still in your lane? Yes. That's impressive, too. That is very impressive. Yeah, so, man. I mean, did you wake up instantly with a crash? Were you unconscious at all? Uh, actually, no, actually, I, I, I woke up. Just before. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. Here yeah. are the seven words you can't say on the radio. That's what I would think too. Yeah. So, honestly, Sucker. Thoughts. Mother. That's what. Uh, and please keep those words in mind when calling. <laughs> now back to the program. That's what police maybe think happened to Tiger Woods. They don't know because they basically they, the Genesis uh, vehicle that he was in has like a black, black box, box yeah. equivalent. There was no brake marks. Like he, right. didn't, he never, he never tried to stop. He never tried to to veer. He just basically. I was, don't know anything about his crash. I'm not a big fan of his. I've not done a lot of reading about it. But what I do know of him, if I'm going to speculate without looking at any evidence, he was hired drunk, did not break, passed out of the wheel, and that's why he rolled his car. Yeah. Who fell asleep and where? Two zero six four two one rock. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. You're in the men's room. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. This guy calls for right here. <laughs> A tough walrus who was spotted on the coast of an Irish island on uh, Sunday could have arrived after falling asleep on an iceberg in the Arctic, according to a marine biologist. <laughs> Kevin Flannery, the director of the Ocean World Aquarium in Dingle, Colorado, told the Irish Independent the uh, animal may have been carried across the Atlantic before reaching the rocks of Lynch Island. I'd say what happened is he fell asleep on an iceberg and drifted off, and then he was gone too far out. Into the mid-Atlantic, or somewhere like that off of uh, Greenland, possibly. That is uh, usually what happens. They fall asleep on an iceberg, and they get carried off from the Arctic. Uh, footage of the walrus has uh, been captured on the island, and a resident there who said he and his five-year-old daughter first spotted the animal on the shoreline as they walked along the beach on Sunday. I thought it was a seal at first, and then when we saw the tusks, uh, he kind of jumped up on the rocks. He was massive. He was about the size of a bull or a cow. Pr pr pretty similar in size. He is big. Keep in mind, this same guy shows up two days later off the coast of Wales. Are you serious? That's the direction he went. Yeah, so they <laughs> spotted him again. And all because he fell asleep on top of an iceberg. Our question, who fell asleep and where? 206-421-ROCK. Couple of comments here. It says, for the question of the day, I work in a truck shop. I had an employee fall asleep several times. One time he was mounting semi-truck tires to a truck. Another time he was operating a table saw and fell asleep. Jesus. And I like this one. It says, all the bitches. My mom fell asleep in a honey bucket at the White River Amphitheater oh. during a concert. Could not find her for about an hour. That from Josh. Wow. That I fell asleep in camping chairs. That was your mom? Sure. But, man, a honey bucket at a live concert venue, that is not... That is not at all where I want to Somebody's be. not used to the fireball. <laughs> Your mom can't handle the fireball. fireball. Yeah, that's something like I've definitely fallen asleep in camping chairs, no not doubt. in a porta potty. I've never fallen asleep on the toilet. 
I don't think I've ever done that. I fell asleep on the toilet. I don't think I fell asleep on the toilet. Maybe once. Maybe one time in my life. I don't think I've fallen... Mike, have you fallen asleep on the toilet? No, I've not fallen asleep on the toilet. I have fallen asleep on a gun range, though. At a gun range? At a gun range, yes. There's not enough loud stimulus for you? Obviously not. So, uh, <laughs> one year when I was in Jesus. Scouts... Uh, I was the senior <laughs> patrol leader of, of my particular trip. We were going to go to this summer camp one time. They did a deal where they wanted the patrol leader to focus more on leadership skills as opposed to getting merit badges, which is what everybody did at these at these summer so camps. Go to sleep. So they sent me to camp a week early. That's what they did. They brought the, the senior patrol leaders to the camp a week early so they could get all their merit badges out of the way then spend the next week to focus on, on leadership. I didn't. I just got two weeks worth of merit badges. But I went there. I befriended everybody at the gun range because I loved being there on the gun range. And then the second week when I was there, it takes a lot out of you, so I was really, really tired often but i just hung out of the gun range a ton so there was one day that i was just kind of sitting there and then the staff went off and they were actually conducting a, a merit badger or a shooting whatever they were doing but they were letting it all happen the gun range is live and i just kind of put my head down and i fell asleep i woke up in a puddle of my own drool <laughs> mm. jesus at the gun range yeah who fell asleep and where 206 421 <laughs> hello julian welcome to the men's room hola hola how's it going doing great ma'am Thank you for asking, Julian. Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm just on my way to CPAC. You know. Yeah, we we knew that. You're uh you're leaving <laughs> town or you're picking up your aunt uh, no, Claire? No, I'm going to pick somebody up. Oh, that's I'm going what, to pick somebody up. That's what Ted had the money on. Ted, I owe you a dollar. Are you pick excited to uh, see this person up. or are you obligated to see them? Uh, excited. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So not a failure. Though. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, anyway... So it was uh, Halloween night. I was at my uh, a party. It was our senior year of high school, so we were all dressed up. I think I was a hippie, and my buddy Craig, uh, he was dressed up as kind of himself. It was this joke we had in high school where he basically made fun of food review YouTubers, and he had dressed up as his moniker, or like, or not his moniker, but like his uh, character for right. Halloween that year. And uh, we were sitting there on the couch, and kind of like towards the end of the night at the party, we were staying at our friend's house, and. And he's sitting there with his beer in his hand, and he's got his costume was basically just a, a pair of sunglasses he wore, and so you couldn't see his eyes, really dark tinted sunglasses. And he's sitting there with the beer in his hand. I kind of like notice he's just not moving. I'm like, okay, whatever. He's just chilling. Go back over like an hour later, and turns out he was just asleep. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, all right. He's sitting straight up, like in a in a chill position, beer in his hand on the rest next to him and he's just chilling so we're like okay we leave him there and i I actually eventually fell asleep on the couch next to him that night and i wake up the next morning kind of look down at my feet and he's still sitting there just like that beer in his hand straight up uh so i kind of like kick him doesn't move i kick him a little harder and he kind of like looks over at me and he's like he like groans in pain as he looks over he's like oh what ask me what time it is i'm like oh it's probably like 11 he had been sleeping like that for probably about 13 to 14 hours, I think. Damn. I must have needed asleep. Just Yeah, I, yeah, I guess he must have been uh must have had one too many or something, but Sounds like a great party. <laughs> yeah, it was a good night actually. Uh yeah. yeah, we were at our buddies who are a little bit older than us, so it was it was kind of fun. What uh what would you say guys is the longest period of time you you fallen asleep and and what was the reason? So like when you just cuz I can remember one where I slept for almost 2 days. Never that long. I think I slept for like 21 hours once, but I had mono. And okay. like, it just wipes you out. It's crazy, man. But yeah, just dead asleep, 21 mm-hmm. hours. I slept for a day and a half. That was probably the longest. Drugs, day. booze? No, I was a kid. Came back from uh, doing 10 days of uh, canoeing in Canada. Ah, okay. That it's hard sense. to get a good night's sleep. Get up early. Get the sure. boats in the water. Take off. Tents up. Tents down. Cooking all the time. You know, it's just, you, you just wipe the hell out. We ended up doing like 70, 80 miles. So that'll do it. By the time I got home, I was just out. You'd asked if uh, anyone had fallen asleep on the toilet. And a uh, guy says, I fell asleep on the toilet, drunk, hand on drugs, chipped my tooth. As I'm my friends when I woke up, I was at home. I have no recollection. My friend and his girl I had to pull my pants up and bring me home. Another guy says he fell asleep on the toilet because uh, he was drinking. I did not think that I had fallen asleep on the toilet. And then his text came in from my wife, said, yes, when drinking. So, yeah, apparently I have, in huh. fact, fallen asleep on the toilet. I mean, I have a cousin that did, but it was years ago. Drunk? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I don't feel so bad about that. Like, eh. Problem is you can't feel your legs. They're numb. You've uh, put them to sleep, and then when you wake up, it's the realization of... 
I can't walk. If I have to it. sit here longer. I mean, I've never fallen asleep. I've just been sitting there too long, fooling around on my phone, reading a magazine or whatever. Just like, oh, God, I, I can't get up now. <laughs> I can't feel my legs. Yeah, I mean, right, I have other reasons I've been stuck in bathrooms. Like? Just, you know, it's like, the, you know, that story I told. I was in a porta potty at a festival for God knows how long. Oh, because you're just, what, tripping on whatever that yeah, smoking weed in there, and then I came out and <laughs> talked to the wise dog, who's just a ratty-ass dog. You thought it was a wise goat, right? So, really, yeah. I talked to a wise goat, and then the next day, it's like it's some mangy-ass dog. Yeah. <laughs> Who fell asleep and where? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Brenda. Welcome to the room. Hello. Hola. <laughs> so, well, Brenda... Go ahead. Yes. I'm calling because as soon as you said fell asleep, I knew exactly what I was going to call you guys and tell you because it is one of the most bizarre things that's ever happened to me. What happened? Do you do you want us to guess it or do you want to tell us? <laughs> no. Okay, let me guess. I'm sorry. You were on a roller coaster and fell asleep. I did that yep. once, but I was high. Um, <laughs> you fell asleep while um, engaged in coitus. Yes. Is that I got it? Almost. No, 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 no. We were still sliding into third base. I had already uh, polished his mat, and he was returning the favor. Okay. In, while doing it. You have a boring vagina. I don't no, know if anyone's... No. Boy, didn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Look, Brenda... Oh, I, dude, I feel... I, 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 I feel scarred. It. I have done that once. Uh, me and... and the <laughs> well, girl. Hold on. Both of you... Felt, she, we she's were, saying that she fell asleep while receiving. You were the giver. No, no. No, he, he fell asleep oh, while he performing. Fell asleep. Okay. I have passed out, passed out, and I was not bored. I was just super drunk, but so was she. So we both fell asleep in that position, which made it worse because we slept for several hours. So when I woke up, it's a it's a different situation going on down there after, you know, the excitement's gone right. away, so to speak. But right. I wake up, I have like 10 minutes to get to work, right? So I'm like... Jesus Christ, man. So I run and obviously brush my teeth. I'm wiping off my face. The problem was uh, this was late 80s, so pubic hair was still part of the equation. And on my forehead, it looked like somebody punched me with an SOS pad. I like yeah, my too. Yeah, so when I get to work, because it's not like I'm trying to tell people what my night was, but I get to work and everyone I work with keeps pointing at my forehead going, dude, what's on your forehead? Because they thought it was like a rash. And I'm like, that is the indentation of pubic hair. I fell asleep face down. <laughs> right now, what did you do when this happened? Did you try to wake him up? Well, the first thing I noticed was that things got still. The second thing I noticed was that it felt like something was pulling on my hair. Yeah. Only because he fell asleep with gum in his mouth. Oh! Yeah, gum in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know guys, ever, uh, I don't know if I've ever thought about that before. I think I'd take the gum out. I, you know, I would yeah. too, not even because before, I'm a gentleman. I just feel like even before we kissed, if I was if I had gum in my mouth, I'm assuming that's part of the foreplay. I'd probably get rid of the right. gum before you stuck your tongue in my mouth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, or I put mine in yours. Oh no! <laughs> what the gum? You're you gonna keep your gum? gum in? Hey, yeah, why not? Are you doing everything really? with gum in? It depends on what she likes. What huh. flavor of the gum is? Yeah, what kind of gum was it? <laughs> For me, just juicy fruit. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. gotta get some sweet. Uh, <laughs> that, might, that, might, that might psychologically scar me. What, if someone fell asleep? Yeah. Eh, I can live with it. Yeah. I mean, I've been, like, it's not the ideal what, moment. My question is, what like, now? I guess you let him sleep. I know, but you gotta take care of some you. I mean, we <laughs> we both passed out, but it was uh, it is a like oh my god, it, you know, because like anything, when you wake up from being drunk, it takes a second just kind of get your bearings. You know, you're looking around, and I'm like, this is not a pillow under my face. Like, oh my, oh god, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? Who fell asleep and where? Two oh six four two one rock. So you never kissed somebody with gum in your mouth? No, I mean I have. Yeah, I'm maybe. just saying like. You're just chewing gum. You're gonna you gotta take it out before you kiss someone. Okay, now look, I've kissed someone with gum in my mouth. I mean, hell, I'm married, so you, you have hell poppy yeah. seeds in your mouth, and you're like, whatever, we're past that, right? But I would think at the moment I'm going to perform what this guy was doing. Well, I've, that's different. So you would take it out before that. Well, again, it depends. You're not guaranteeing this at all. Like, no, not at all. So okay. just, all right, say it is a fairly fresh piece of gum, so the flavor is still banging, right? All right, are you keeping it in your mouth? Right, so the the gum is still know. just yeah. blasting. Why not? Right, I think I I think I have to talk to my friends about it. She she wouldn't stop chewing her gum. <laughs> she had the gum in the entire time. Oh, it'd be like a Larry David thing for me. I'd be like, I can't believe it.
She was chewing the gum while we were kissing, and then she got the gum in her mouth, and then when we were done, she was still chewing the same stick of gum. I, I can't believe it. I think it would distract me if, like, you're having sex, you look right. down, they're still chewing. Yeah. I look up, there's a big bubble coming out of her mouth. <laughs> if you start blowing <laughs> bubbles, bubbles, then I'm going to say something. Like, right. for chewing gum on a left, but if you start I mean, it's not blowing something bubbles. something you would do all the time, but I don't know, you have a quick afternoon, you know, maybe uh, pre, like, pre-nap, the gum's still in, you finish up, like, all right. Okay. Would you blow a bubble when you're done? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I don't, I don't care. Who fell asleep and where? 206 Are you blowing a bubble? Sure I am. Yeah. Sure I am. You bought me the gum. <laughs> it's delicious. Hello, David. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch. Hola. 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 How are we doing today? Doing great, man. Thank you, brother. Good. Well, so here's a scenario. I was racing the hydroplanes, and this was probably six, seven years ago. We went to Joe Hawk Guitar, and we... Flew, flew back. I think there were three different flights to get back. We flew all night, and I, I think we got home about 2, 2, 3 in the morning. I had to work the next day. I was out of vacation time. So 5 o'clock, I get up, and I go work my 10 hours at my construction job. And on my way home, I'm going back up to Lake Stevens, and there's two, two lanes that turn left, and it's always backed up there. It's always slow. And I remember I'm in, a, I'm in an older Honda. It was a manual. And I remember I'm like, oh, I can just close my eyes for a second. The light just turned red. The next thing I know, there's three people banging on my windows trying to get me to wake up. They probably assume I'm passed out, you know, from, from being drunk, but they're just... Oh, hang on, hang on. Once again, Two. Colors, here are the seven <laughs> Two, two customers. Ah. <laughs> we thought we'd be safe Sugar, with the whole sleep mother- thing. Right? right. Please keep those words in mind when calling. Now, back to the program. I mean, David, we recognize there are skid mm. marks on your tongue breaks, but... <laughs> what uh so did uh did you talk to them or did you say the hell that i'm driving away oh no i just i just put the car in, in gear and took off yeah i, I mean I, w- I was like i was scared because i'm like oh they're, they're gonna be calling the cops i, I was gonna was say yeah. they, probably called, they probably called they probably called 911 and said there's a drunk guy driving a honda around you know yeah probably and i just took off and i i, I got out of there because I, I thought i was gonna be in trouble i gotta ask you a question when you go that far to race something you got to get it there. Or do you just use what they've got? In other words, how the hell do you get that size boat, you know, what, 10,000 miles from home? Well, so um, what we did is we, when we raced in San Diego, we actually took the, the boat from San Diego to uh, Char- Charleston, and then it gets on from Charleston, it gets on a barge, and they barge it over. Wow. I was going to say, I, I, I couldn't imagine how you would get a boat. Like, oh, yeah, my yeah. boat's, boat's going to be there. Yeah. That's crazy. That yeah, is... it, it takes a long time to to get there on a barge, and then you know, then they bring it to the race site. We spend you know five six days there, and then they barge it back. That's crazy. That's crazy. I can't. I mean, it's just so far out of my lifestyle. I just like, know that how, makes complete just, sense. Just from but... going down to Seafair, I know how big those boats are. Yeah, the ones he's talking about are even bigger. They're kind of like the old Miss Budweisers, like the real big ass ones. So I'm just thinking to myself, like, what airplane, even a, one of those big ass cargo planes, could you even fit that in? Who fell asleep and where? Two zero six four two one Rock. Uh, just real quick, Miles, we we're discussing the. I don't know, the etiquette of removing gum from your mouth. Yeah. And, and like kissing, whatever. But we're talking about, you know, mm-hmm. getting involved in the real action. So yeah, whatever. One guy just says, look, if I'm getting some, who the hell cares if they're chewing gum? Right there with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like this one. It says, my ex, she used to put her gum in my mouth before uh, performing karaoke. So she could come back and get it? I'm guessing so. Right. But he was like, hey, dude, make great things ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's like, right. whatever. Fine. Chew as much gum as you want. Was her name Tammy? I feel like that's a Tammy move. Hey, hey, take my gum. It still has flavor. Hold my bubblicious. <laughs> Who fell asleep and where? 206 421 Rock. <laughs> yeah. I thought Taste. that was like a thing back in the Taste day. What's that? Hey, you're chewing gum. You make out with somebody. Now they're chewing the gum. ABC yeah. gum. <laughs> All right. Hello, Mike. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Uh, so we were years ago taking my brother out for his 21st birthday. And, uh,. He ended up taking off. Uh, I ended up drinking way too much, blacked out. Last thing I remember doing is paying, trying to pay for my library card, or the, the drink with my library card, right? And then uh, the next morning, I'm waking up with a cop tapping on the window. I'm a map sitting in the passion through this car. I didn't drive. Like, I know I did the car was. I rolled the window down. And he just goes, sir, are those your pants and shoes over there on that vehicle? And uh, he had, I guess, followed a trail of my clothes all the way through this parking garage to where I was sleeping. 
and uh, get all my like empty my pockets out. I'm getting out, and I'm you know a little worried because the time I'm selling weed, I know I got weed in my pocket. And uh, he starts taking to the car, and he's like, "Sir, do you know who this vehicle is?" And I'm I'm laughing. I'm still a little drunk at this point. And, you know, I realized he didn't find the weed; it was still stuck in the pocket. So I'm like, "He's stoked." And uh, I'm like, he goes, he goes. I'm uh, like, like sort of laughing. He goes, sir, he goes, this isn't funny. He goes, I'm going to ask you again. He goes, the ignition's ripped out of a stolen vehicle. Uh-oh. And so I basically was like a couple blocks away from where I used to live. So my drunk butt basically, I'm assuming, wandered into a parking garage, found a warm place to sleep, and then uh, just picked the wrong car. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. When I was about 20 years old, well, me and three friends, we went down to New Orleans, and uh, two of the friends we were going to meet, they were they both went to Auburn University, so we were just going to pick uh-huh. them up on the way and drive the rest of the way into New Orleans and do our thing. So we didn't really know, timing-wise, when we would roll in, sure. that kind of thing. I mean, we, we'd stop every once in a while, do the payphone thing, make a call. You know, like, all we knew is, we have got the address, we're going to bang on the door when we get there. From there, you better be ready to go. We're going to show up sometime during this day. Let's go. So basically, we did that. We were a little bit later than we thought. But we figured the hell with it. We're not too far away now that we're in Alabama. It's not r- ridiculous. Let's just keep on driving. So I can't remember what the deal was, but we pulled in. We drove all night. We got there at, like, say, 7 or 8. So nothing is really going on in New Orleans yet. Right. Things are just kind of starting to open up. But uh, this is so a hosing down. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah. That's about the time. Yeah. That you know, and unfortunately for us, we could not check into our hotel till like 3 o'clock the next day. Or that is so annoying with hotels. Bro. So I, I get close. To, I'm, I'm downtown. I'm, I'm pretty close to French Quarter. I park the car. We all fall asleep. I don't know how long we were asleep. To be honest with you, I can't remember. All I know is I feel this tap. I hear a tapping on the window. And I'm driving. And it's a pretty, it's it's like a hammer tap, you know? Right. And I look over, and I really don't see anything. I don't see anybody. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and then I look, and there's there's four horses. There are four horse legs. So they were steamed up, too. Right. you got to remember, I'm trying to look through this Oh, sure, sure. I'm trying to, and then I see a boot. And then I look up, and there's a cop on a horse. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, what's going on? I'm like, ah, man, we... We got into town early this morning, I said, and we just figured we'd park the car and take a nap because we can't check into our hotel. He said, well, what hotel are you checking into, gentlemen? You know, I of said, course. Right over there, man. We're checking into whatever the hotel was kind of across the street. And he goes, uh, you're going to follow me uh, to that parking lot, and uh, we're going to pull in, and we're going to make sure you have a reservation. I was like, okay. How long so, does it take a horse to get over there? We were on the road. No, it's what I, mean, but I, I was following a guy on a horse. Right, on me, the how long does it take? He got in the turn lane with a horse and made a left on the arrow. We pulled in. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. We pulled into the hotel room, or the hotel, parked the car. Uh, we went in and checked in just to see if we could check in. Right. We could not check in because the rooms were not ready yet. Cop comes in with us. He goes, okay, man, you guys just be, be safe. Park the car. Don't drive the car anywhere. He thought we were drunk. And I'm like, well, of course he did. Yeah. But we weren't. You know what I mean? Like, he just assumed that we had spent the night there. We got I would, night. too. Yeah. Exactly. It's so New Orleans. Orleans. Once we cleared it up with him, we're like, dude, we, we drove it. We swear to God, we drove in. Right. Like, he's like, all right, guys, just, you know, chill out. But it's so weird. Like, follow me. And he, he's, he, yeah, he's riding a horse down the middle of the road. <laughs> like, I'm just following the car. Like, God, this is weird. They love those horses in yeah. New Orleans. Who fell asleep and where? 206-421-Rock.